It's the Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I go look at local plays and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed in daily fantasy sports and these contests to operate. If you have any questions related to NASCAR, that isn't a stupid question, feel free to shoot it my way at Brandon Cruz DFS on Twitter. Most importantly, take everything here with a grain of salt and use your best judgment when making entries. Additionally, if you have a game of addiction, that is not my problem. Check your sense of feelings at the door. We're talking about the Xfinity Series race at bristol this weekend talking about on a wednesday afternoon so currently right now salaries are not out sadly but like i said in the truck series race in the truck series video which i would recommend you listen to because you got plenty of time to do it this is basically turned into the eight dollar contest podcast because that's really the only contest worth playing right now for the lower levels of nascar oh, excuse me with football back why well, i would argue that the audience is there because this contest has been filling up or at least last week filled up really early they're having to make more i would argue that the audience is there for more truck and xfinity series contest on DraftKings, but that's just how it is uh the eight dollars about the only one that's worth playing right now so we're gonna be talking about that we're gonna be talking about the regular season finale this weekend so let's get right into it like i said check out the truck podcast regular season finale the only thing to note from that really is uh, brandon brown and jeremy clements are 43 points uh that that's how many points are separating them brandon brown is currently in the playoffs right now clements is out i the only way that clements would get in is one he needs to do very well in stages and finish ahead of brandon brown so best case scenario for jeremy clements is he finishes like fourth or third or something in the first and second stage brandon brown does not that would knock off at least, you know, 16 points off that lead that Brandon Brown has. And then he'd probably have to finish 16, 20, somewhere around there, 20 points or 20 positions ahead of Brandon Brown. It's going to be really difficult, but Jeremy Clements can do it if Brandon Brown has a bad race. So just keep that in mind. Brandon Brown basically just has to survive. He cannot afford to wreck out of this race. So I don't see Brandon Brown really pushing it a whole lot. He's just going to try and survive. If he gets into a wreck, he's going to try and get that car repaired and just run laps. Jeffrey Earnhardt, not Jeffrey Earnhardt, Jeremy Clements has to make stuff happen. He needs to race aggressive. He cannot afford to, you know, just chill, just wait, race this calmly. He can't do that. This is his chance to make the playoff. He, he Get ready to see Jeremy Clements do some really stupid stuff in this race. <laughs> That's all I got to say related to the playoffs. Remember, go to raceforthepriz.com to get the fantasy NASCAR spreadsheet that I use that you need to be using as well. Football season is here. And one thing that we don't have anymore is time. We got to worry about a Thursday night football game. We got to worry about the games on Sunday. We got to worry about the Monday night games, the Sunday night games, your fantasy football leagues, season long, best ball, whatever it is. If you're still doing best ball at this point, you don't have time to be looking up NASCAR information. That's why you need to get the race for the prize fantasy nascar sheet get that at race for the prize.com it's got everything you need lap data positions optimal lineups a optimizer a mass multi mass multi entry tool i don't know why i always butcher that race ratings driver ratings driver history previous race performance everything in one location makes your life way easier during this busy busy time in sports and dfs so just go there so if you look at that what are the two tracks i'm going to look at primarily and that is going to be the last bristol race earlier this year and the dover race as i mentioned in the truck series video i'm going to heavily rely on dover mainly just because they're very similar i know dover is one one mile bristol is what a 0.553 or something like that but these tracks race very similar they're in the corners more than they're on the straightaways you have to get that car working well in the corner you have to get it set up you have to arrive to the track quick those are the two tracks those teams are going to base their setups off of it, it's very similar to how this race should break up to where fast cars are going to get out in front lower cars are going to get lapped lower cars are just going to have to start yielding to traffic and they're going to easily go laps down i mean laps here are 15 seconds or less not a whole lot of time to you know really take take it easy you got to be on the ball and if your setup is off if your car is off you're gonna have a bad time looking at let's talk about starting parks first let's talk about sponsorships and stuff let's get that out of the way because that's what everybody always asks me for and look i'm gonna break this down as quickly as possible for you and i'm just gonna talk about the guys that everybody asks about every freaking week so Stephen light starting 36 he's in the 66 car is he starting parking this weekend i can't tell you right now 
on a Wednesday afternoon. I have no information on NBA Motorsports other than Chad Fitchup right now. If that 66 car has no sponsorship on that car, I don't care if it's a clash, crash, car, car, clash, cr claims, crash, claims, whatever it is, that doesn't count. I want to see a better sponsor than that on that 66 car for me to believe that it's going to run the full race. That 66 car has been a start and park this entire year other than two distinct races. Last week, um, he was in the 13. Light legit had a mechanical failure in the first Richmond race. His rear axle broke. He did not finish that race in race one. In race two, he ran the full race. And uh, that's about it. So when you see that he had a 29th race rating and he finished 22nd at Richmond, that's because, you know, he was sponsored. He was running the full race. They planned to run both races this at, at Richmond. You know, they legit had bad luck in the first race for that car. And Vinnie Miller should be good. He finished 28th at Dover. Vinnie Miller starting 35th in a BJ McLeod Motorsports car in the 99. That 99 has ran very well at Bristol in the past that this car in general has one has ran very well at these faster tracks i know that's kind of weird we'll see that he finished we'll see that vinnie miller finished 36 at dover but i, I see bj mcleod and their team putting a lot of effort um into this week's race um timmy hill he's in the 13 gotta see if he has a sponsor right now on thursday we don't know there's no real information on on him timmy hill's talking about his own stuff on facebook on twitter MBM's talking about basically nothing other than Chad Fitchup, and that's more Chad than MBM at this point on a, on a Wednesday of this week. Uh, Stephen Parsons, he has a full three-race deal with spring rates for Bristol, Texas, and Martinsville for that BJ McLeod Motorsports number 78 entry. This is a guy I'm very interested in. The amount of money going into this car is outrageous, and I know this is Stephen. This is not towards... Or this is not BJ McLeod bringing the sponsorship in. This is Stephen Parsons bringing him his own sponsor, giving them a car to run. I expect this car to do very well. I am looking forward to Stephen Parsons tearing it up this week at Bristol in that 78 car. Howard ran very well last time to Bristol, other than getting wrecked at the very end. Uh, and I believe he wrecked somebody. I don't remember who he wrecked. Uh, but he did wreck somebody last year, or in this last race earlier in the year. Uh, Dexter Bean. He is slow, but he ran a full race at Richmond last week. Ran him. You know, he's off pace. He's a slow car, but they're not just straight out starting and parking this car. Um, he finished, let's just see where he finished these last two. Yeah, he finished 32nd and 30th the last two races at Richmond. I don't expect this race to be that big of a wreck fest. I expect it to look very similar to the first Bristol race, so we're not going to see a whole lot of crazy shenanigans unless it's from you know, uh, Jeremy Clements and things of that nature. So I, I'm probably going to avoid Dexter Bean. I'd much rather take risks on Vinnie Miller, Parsons, Howard, other people like that. Uh, Gray Golding, he's got walk-ons back. Let's see, Chad Fitchup. Now he's in. Okay, so I might be going too in-depth here. But if you look at Chad Fitchup, he is sponsored this weekend. He was He's already been talking about this throughout the week. Let me get. Let me bring his stuff up really quick. He He's already been talking about it through the week. He is in the, let me make sure I'm still recording. Yep. He is in the number 61 Toyota Supra for Emmy Motorsports with Toyota of Knoxville and Garrison Homes on this car. Now, why is this important? Why am I bringing this up specifically? Well, in the past, when Garrison Homes have been on his car, he's normally been in the 13 in that banana boat car, the one that failed inspection last weekend. He always has Garrison Homes on that car. So this isn't like a new sponsor. I know it's a new look, but it's not a new sponsor coming in. However, I don't think he's ever ran the Super yet. Why is this important? Well, look, the Toyota Camry that NBM has is more of their safe car. You know, it's there. They don't have to work on it. It's a 2018 model. It's been around forever. The Supra, you know, this is this is a newer body. This is a car fielded by Hattori. I think Chad Fitchup has a very good chance to have a career day here. Timmy Hill has ran very pa very well in this car in the past at Bristol. I don't know how much of that is Timmy Hill and how much of it is the car, but I really like Chad Fitchup this weekend. And I know I might be looking I might be looking too much into this, so you know, might be might just be me being weird, but I think that's the situation that uh, that Chad Fitchup is in this weekend. And that's about it in terms of starting parks. I mean, look, Kyle Weatherman, the whole Mike Harmon 
scenario. I mean that we'll learn day of if they got you know a real a real horse in this race or not. Uh, outside of that, let's look at how I want to approach this race, how I'm looking to approach it. If we look at, and I'm not going to say the optimal lineup because I want you guys to purchase the spreadsheet or I'm, some, I'm, I'm sure some idiot will post on Twitter and just ruin it for everybody. But if you look at the previous race here, earlier in this year, and if you look at previous races, we typically have two dominators in the optimal lineup, sometimes three, depending on how it is, but it's normally two dominators and four place differential. And even the punts aren't that wild. It's very similar to the trucks that I think you do need one punt in your lineup two dominators and everybody else just focus on val uh, excuse me focus on value the the difficulty comes from trying to figure out where the ownership is and that's what i'm going to talk about here more than anything because look we already know who's going to be fast L just look at how they've driven this year look at bristol look at dover who who should be quick i mean chase briscoe even though he didn't do much of anything he should he should have a fast car i don't know if he'll lead just Nogai or Chastain have had fast cars. Gregson and Cindric are probably class of the field right now. Justin Haley is probably the last car that I'd look at to be fast. Um, and then everything else is going to be based off of where ownership goes. I mean, I, I imagine a lot of people are going to be on Anthony Alfredo and Riley Herbst. And I think that's about it. That's about the only places I can see ownership really going. Probably Stephen Parsons is going to carry ownership as well. People usually hop on him, even though I'm not too sure. I'd have to see uh, where people are going for a great ownership, for an idea of ownership. Free NASCAR DFS always has his um, his sheet out on Twitter, and I I normally use that as as a point to see where chalk is. And I've told him before, so don't worry. This is not an insult towards Jason or anything because we've we've talked about this before. But I typically use him to see where the chalk is because most people play the plays that he talks about. Even you know people that don't read his plays, he, Jason is very good at at determining where the chalk is for these lower series. And so I always look at that to get an idea. So I I normally you know, have a list down of who I'm interested in, compare it to Jason's list to see if he's talking about certain people. And if he's talking about certain people, I, I typically try to remove them because I'm like, oh, there's going to be ownership on these guys. I, I don't want to use them. So let's let's talk about the guys I like, and then let's talk about the guys that I think we're going to see ownership on. Just starting from, the, from, let's start from the top of the grid forward. I like, to, and I'm going to say a lot of likes here because look, it, it all depends on ownership. Or, or, excuse me. It all depends on salary. It all depends on lineup construction, but Bristol is a track that I can have a bigger player pool than normal because you know certain guys will have a better chance here because it's a track that kind of evens the field out if you're at least in a mid-tier, top-tier car, and it's very forgiving on people who are getting place differential just because people are going to get lapped, people are going to get trapped laps down, and it's very easy to get a lot of place differential if you remain on the lead lap while everybody else is why everybody else is getting lapped so i like all guy like chastain like gregson like Haley, like uh Cindric, like jones like annette i like briscoe i like moffitt i like anthony alfredo riley herbst joe graff jr weatherman to an extent tommy joe martins chad fitchup greg alding snyder Howard Parsons, Vanderwall. Don't call me crazy. I actually do like Vanderwall this weekend. Uh, Timmy Hill, Vinnie Miller, and Light if he is sponsored. Now let's talk about let's talk about where I think ownership is going to go. I think a lot of the ownership in the value area, in the punt area, is going to be centered around Vinnie Miller, Timmy Hill, Parsons, Howard, Chad Fisherman, and Tommy Joe Martins, and probably Jesse Little and Weatherman to an extent. I can't, it's hard for me to pinpoint who's going to have the most ownership of these guys, but I think these are going to be the common plays for value, for punts, things of that nature. That's why I actually like Cody Vanderbilt in the situation starting 33rd. Cody, take it behind the wall, finished 21st here earlier in the year. He's had an abysmal, these, these last four races have been atrocious, actually this whole year. Good Lord, the guy hasn't finished outside the top 30 since Pocono. So... I might be getting on this idea at a, at a bad time, but I don't see the reason that people would look at Cody Vanderwall here. That's why I'm interested in Vanderwall for lower ownership, just because I don't imagine anybody's going to use him. And look, if if he ran, I mean, he ran 21st in Bristol earlier this year. I understand we had some wrecks. I know that, but 
he should arrive with at least some knowledge of this track. He shouldn't be that horrible. Um, so yeah, I mean, Vanderwall will certainly be lower out. Um, I would primarily want to focus on Parsons and Timmy Hill and Chad Fitchup, but that's just me. Greg Alding, everybody's... I don't, Greg Alding's another guy. I, I can't understand where the ownership comes on him, lays on him each and every week at Daytona. He was highly owned, but maybe that's because people liked his his car. At Dega, he was highly owned. Um, why does it say... No, that wasn't Greg Alding. I'm thinking of who, who, oh, who was it that wrecked? I just went blank. Anyway, Greg Alding has performed very well at the play tracks this year. Was that Joe? I think that was Joe Graff Jr. Yeah, Joe Graff Jr. was the guy who had the uh, purple car at Daytona. Anyway, um, Greg Alding usually has walk-ons on the car, finished second at Daytona, eighth at Dega. Why is this important? Well, because we have a lot of people coming into play NFL here at... Um, here on DraftKings, people join there and they're like, oh, you know, I can I can play Xfinity too. So they're going to click and see Greg Golding. And he's, I don't know what his his points are going to be, but they're going to see like an average points of like 48 or 52 or whatever next to his name. And I don't know if, if DraftKings will price him accordingly to that, but that normally draws a lot of the casuals to click on him because they're like, oh, Greg Golding, what? He, this dude does great, man. He's, he's one of the best average DK point plays this year. Little do they know, he's only ran the plate tracks, so it's, it's always difficult to figure out where he comes in on ownership. Howard, um, I could have swore Howard wrecked. Was that at Charlotte? Maybe it's Charlotte. Maybe I was wrong when I talked about Howard wrecking, because he finished 19th earlier this year. I know he wrecked somebody. I wasn't sure if he finished the race or not. Uh, no, that was, um, I'm thinking of, where was the first? It was Kentucky. Or Texas, one of those. He wrecked at one of those. I don't remember. Let me look. He finished 37. I'm going on a tangent. I don't need this. <laughs> um, Howard should carry ownership as well. He's been a popular punt play on the smaller tracks this year. Uh, and I mean pump popular is in like, you know, 23% ownership, 27% ownership. So we're trying to find something smaller, especially if we're trying to take down that $8 GPP. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to push people to Chad Fitchup. Fincham. I always forget how to say his last name. It seems to me everybody says it slightly different. I I like him a lot too. If if um uh, I, I like NBA Motorsports on these smaller fast tracks. That's just how I am, especially with him in the sixty one car. I just I like how that's line up. Jesse Little, a lot of people have been playing him. I understand he hasn't been optimal. I think it's three weeks since he's been optimal, but look, JD Motorsports knows what they're doing. They run very consistent line. They run very consistent races. Their cars are all set up to where they should at least, you know, finish the race. Him and BJ McLeod would probably be the two guys I'd look at. Him and Howard as well, but I don't mind that. Mike Snyder will carry a lot of ownership too. Uh, he keeps. It's really funny um, seeing people tilt at Mike Snyder. Last week, he he wrecked it in the first Richmond race. His backup car was the one he ran at Darlington, and I don't know why he was advertising that so much, because I'm like, dude, Richmond and Darlington are two different planets. What the heck are you talking about? So, uh, Myatt Snyder, probably going to carry ownership. But he's, it, people talk about him like he's Eric Jones. A lot of people hate playing Eric Jones in the Cup Series, but just you don't even have to look into it that much. You know when to play him. You know when to not to play him. Look what car he's running. Look what that team is talking about. Um, I knew he was a bad play last week. That's why I didn't play him. I like him this week. I just got to see what type of car he's running, what type of car they're in, if they're talking about it. You know, maybe he's 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 burned people two weeks in a row. Maybe his ownership comes in low. It like early in the week without a whole lot of uh, articles out there and a whole lot of you know the four of us that still make Xfinity series content. It, it's hard to get an idea this early in the week of how people are going to look at that. I think that's about it in terms of uh, ownership. I don't see people using Kyle Weatherman. Probably starting too high up to really worry about it. Joe Graff Jr., I don't like. He's going to wreck or do something stupid. Bailey Curry, starting too high up to really make it work. Uh, Riley Herbst and Anthony Alfredo should carry ownership. They should be around the 8K range, maybe lower 9K. If they're above 10K, I mean, that's stupid. Um, but he should, they, both these guys should be at like 80, 88, 92, somewhere around there. Josh Williams, 
I just don't like it. Matt Mills. Wait a minute here. Yeah, Matt Mills. Yeah, I just am not not a fan. I'm not a fan of Matt Mills in the five car starting too high up. Jeremy Clements, like I said, I, I imagine he's going to do something stupid. That's the only way he can get into the playoffs. He has to race balls to the wall. No, nothing given, man. You know, he, he's got to go for it. Uh, Brett Moffitt, he, he's the one who got wrecked by Howard because uh, they were running well at Bristol. Let me see. No, they didn't run at Bristol. He didn't run at Bristol. The old 2 car ran at Bristol. Somebody else was running the old 2 car at Bristol. They had a very fast car, and they were wrecked by Howard. I don't remember who it is. I don't remember who it was that was wrecked. But this is one of the races that Brett Moffitt did not run. But the O2 car should run very well. He's been lower owned recently. And I mean like 9 to 10%. Let's see what he was last weekend. Hold on, let me pull up the contest. And I'll, I'll look and see what Brett Moffitt was. Because I had Brett Moffitt. I've been playing. Moffitt is my... Um, is my Raphael Lassard in the Xfinity series. Because nobody plays Raphael Lassard. Uh, where is it? Xfinity. Infinity, let's check this out. What was his ownership last weekend? This is in the 8... Brett Moffat came in at 8% owned last... What? Let me see, hold on. That was the first Richmond race. In the first Richmond race, he started 20th, finished 6th in the $8. At 8.8% .8 ownership. And then... In the second Richmond race, let's see where you at. Happy Hour Xfinity, Xfinity. Oh, I clicked on the same contest again. Wow, man, this airtime is bad. I'm trying to figure out his ownership really quick. College football. God, I'm taking forever, man. I should have had. I just, I just thought about bringing this up. I wanted to see what he was at. Was it the two? What? Where is this contest at? Oh, there you go. Hold on. He. Fit, here we go. I forgot they ran the two races back to back. I got confused. Yeah, so he finished uh, the second race. He started 10th, finished 18th. He was at 19% uh, percent ownership. Why is this important? Brett Moffitt, and this makes my point, Brett Moffitt fluctuates between ownership depending on how well he does in the previous race. In, in this situation, he is starting, or in this race, he is starting 14th. He worked in the first return race. He gained an ownership of about you know 9%, 10%. And then he, he he busted in the second Richmond race, finished 19th. I guarantee you that ownership went away. It's it's going to go away. People do not like playing Brett Moffitt. Uh, they, they they it's been this thing this whole year. He does well. He has a he, he busts. The race doesn't go well. He doesn't hit value, and people hop off him. People are not really loyal to Brett Moffitt. And he, and he, you're not loyal to anybody in NASCAR DFS or in DFS in general, but. Brett Moffitt's ownership always fluctuates compared to his last race. And this is a situation where I think people do not play Brett Moffitt. I think he comes in around 14 to maybe 15% ownership, depending on the salary. And I like that a lot. I, I don't I don't hate that at all. Uh, Alex LeBay, I don't like. Well, I just spent all that time talking about uh, Moffitt's ownership. Good Lord. Uh, Alex LeBay, I don't like. Brandon Brown, I he, look, he's going to sandbag. He has no reason to run this race hard. I, I'm terrified to play Brandon Brown. I don't want to be around it. Ryan Sieg, don't like. And then everybody in the top 10 is, is viable. It just depends on how your lineup is going. So like I said before, the lineup should be two to three dominators with one punt play and play whoever you want after that in terms of who offers you the best value, who offers you the place point dif point place differential, and who you think you can get fast laps. I mean, that, that's what I'd build my lineups around thank you guys for listening i have a patreon in the description if you guys felt like i helped you out at all this season in this video this week feel free to donate to me through that that's my donation link because i don't want to deal with having a paypal link right now um i am thinking of content to make for next year in terms of look i like sal Vetri a lot 
I think he's one of the better content creators on YouTube. And him and I started around the same time. He started after me. Not that I'm competing with Salvatry, but I meant that he he his channel grew very quickly because he was on the ball. And I see that, and part of me gets really angry because I feel like I could be there. Not not with his like twenty five thousand subscribers. I don't mean like that, but I feel like he's a template of what I should be doing, or what I should be close to, or attempting. So I'm I'm interested in doing something like him. I'm not going to steal his stuff entirely, but I'm I'm trying to think of what I want to do next year, and I'm thinking about doing more stuff on screen and i'm also thinking about doing like a pair or two guys that i like you know i know people have like oh they're core four core three you know these are your values that you need to shove in your nfl content maybe i maybe i focus on two players that i would like call it a two stack a pair i don't know i'm thinking about doing something like that next year i might do it some i might do it before this year is over but um but i got that and then finally um the ninth annual I Got Balls 400 on iRacing in January. Signups will be out for that. Uh, coming up soon, $1,000 guaranteed money, free entry, absolutely no entry fee. All you got to do is race in. More information on that will be released as we get closer to the month of December and the month of January. But just keep that in mind, early January. I think it's January 13th that the uh, ninth annual IGB is going to be held. Uh, the I've Got Balls 400. And go, go look at it on YouTube. It, we, uh, we changed it. It used to be 250 miles. Now it's going to be 400. But check it out. It's been, a, been an awesome race. I'm excited to start uh, announcing that more and more on this program. And uh, best of luck, guys. And uh, we'll talk later. Peace, peace, peace out.